모든 건 변했다. 히트 시즌 2. Welcome back to Pro League with Tasos and Valdez. Um, CJ is doing it. At least starting to do it. Yeah, they're they're getting the ball rolling. They yeah. used their hero, and he did hero things. Uh, defeated Rogue there. Not what any of us expected. And um, in the past, it was always Hero and Biel that were the ace players here for CJ Antis, but Biel really yeah. hasn't been doing too well. I, I, uh, I gotta hero say, though, as well. if there's someone who's going to lose, at least lately, um, for Jenner, it is Rogue. Okay, I know he's had some great games, guys, but he's actually had some, some poor games as well. He doesn't have the um, best, like, the, well, I don't know. I mean, he's ten and four, on maybe now ten and five, but uh, but, he, but he has had he has had some bumpy games in the past. So, throughout, some, throughout yeah. this year, I mean, it's, he's, he's, he's one of those players. Doubts, you know? one of those players where some days he looks amazing. He yeah, defeats Sess and makes it look easy, and then another day we're like, uh, you know, this, this isn't the road that we expected. It's part of the reason why I think it was Artosis who like predicted him to. Uh, become one of the best Zergs, if not the best Zerg in the world. And yeah. he just kind of like never quite gained that title. He was well, always like overshadowed by more Biel here too. consistent Zergs. Biel, Biel's a great Zerg, but he, he's had, you know, he's had moments where he's like the best Zerg that there is, and then moments where, you know, yeah. he's been having a hard time. The SOS is, he's the guy. You know, all, everybody's the watching, big guy. they all want to be the guy. They're like, I like StarCraft, I want to be the guy. Well, yeah. SOS is the guy, okay? He has these builds that are just like futuristic. Um, it is really hard for these players to prepare against uh, SOS. I'd say SOS's greatest strength, though, is in a long series. Yeah, like for, first yeah. to three I mean, wins, first to four wins. I think I think that's really where he shines. Um, he is however, the BlizzCon champion twice. Yeah, so yeah, uh, that's, <laughs> that's definitely saying something. Yeah, um, and he's won a lot of money uh, in this. Uh, interesting that we have two votes here for Bill. I thought this was going to be the one that was going to be completely yeah. one-sided and not. Uh, hero versus Rogue. Uh, definitely don't expect to be able to take this one. As you can see, the foreign casters are all on the same page here, going for SOS. Nice foreigners stick together. Um, and I believe we're going to go right into this game. So get ready. SOS versus Bill. Yeah. Let's do this. Uh, in the bottom left, it's SOS in the green. Fitting color. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah. In the bottom right, in the yellow, it's Biel. And CJ Antis has, um, CJ in general, has yellow in the logo. So it makes sense. So let's see, let's see what, um, what SOS does. This is like a weird map. And I think that makes it kind of scary uh, if you're against SOS, because SOS, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, because I've been casting SOS like forever now. I, he's just, he's one of these players that just seems to get the game like on this really, really deep level. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times when we have a new map, it's SOS who just looks at the map and, and sees the build before everybody else. Now that might not be the absolute perfect build to do on that map, you know, if you wait like two months and everybody's been playing on it, but. When he comes out, it's usually the build that people can't beat. And that's why I'm really curious to see how he's going to play this. Um, you know, the other thing about SOS is, like, if, if you've ever, like, seen, like, you know, like his replays, for instance, he actually makes mistakes here and there. He's not, yeah. you know, innovation kind of doesn't miss a beat. I mean, that's kind of why people joke about him being sort of like like Alpha Go or like this, you know. He's a robot. This robot. <laughs> SOS makes mistakes, but he just, I mean, they're very subtle, right? I mean, he has, like, you know. Possibly one of the great. Well, he is definitely one of the greatest StarCraft players of all time. But you know, yeah. a lot of times when he's you know throughout the year, he's probably the best player that there is. Um, but he just seems to get it. He seems to just really understand how the units interact with each other. Yeah. When we, to attack? When when to when when, when to proxy? Um, he's he's a really fascinating player to play. I mean, out of all the Protosses I've ever casted, SOS is by far my favorite. He just really has his deep play. I mean, he was the guy. Uh, abusing split map 
better than any other yeah. Protoss could. Like, way ahead of everybody. He's really channeling his inner Protoss, you know. He, he's, we joke about him being an alien. Uh, he's kind of got this futuristic alien vibe around him where no, he, he just understands it better than anyone he, else. He, yeah, he's like, he's like a time traveler. Like, a lot of times the strats he's doing are just, like, totally, totally cutting edge. Yeah. You know? Or it, ahead, it's, it's, even. It's just like... Yeah. Well, it, it's funny, too, because there's, there's nobody that's quite doing it like that. Like, you know, like, Zest... Is like he's playing modern Protoss and he does it like perfectly, and that's yeah. why a lot of people say he's the best. But if you really just look at the way SOS approaches the game, it's kind of terrifying. And by the way, you know, whenever BlizzCon comes around, guess who seems to have the game mapped out the best? Yeah, it's, 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 SOS. A, it's SOS. You know, it, it, it's a pretty incredible thing. So I'm really curious uh, to see what SOS does on this map. Does he play a really standard game? Does he do something tricky? Um, this is a very large map, and just looking at the architecture of it, it seems like it's a map that you really can't attack across for a while. I was thinking maybe he was going to go air and begin to take the islands, but uh, I mean, we saw stats do that to SOS. Obviously, right. a different yeah. matchup, but uh, well, we've been, not we've been gonna go for, it. for yeah. a while, you know, to, to have islands kind of become part of StarCraft II. Uh, and it just seems like, d due to some of the, uh, the the ways that you can engage in StarCraft One, there were uh, islands that were used a lot more, but you, you basically didn't have people. I mean, there were there was a unit similar to the Medivac in StarCraft One that was like dropship, but you kind of didn't make like five or six of them and fly around the map. That just it just yeah. wasn't the way the game worked. So because of that drop, I mean, islands were, had a lot more viability. If you look at, like, this matchup, it's very easy if Terran spots an island to pick up everything and drop on it. And it's very easy for Protoss to land a warp prism over there and suddenly warp in, like, eight adepts and just take the island. Ooh. So, okay, TTs, TTs. Cool. Let's do this. Oh, the Overlord is going to get in, though. And he's going to scout this immediately. Now, okay, because it's SOS, I want to know, does he cancel this or does he let this finish and not go DTs? Because this is why SOS is so good. He it's, just started it. I would actually like to see him cancel it. Well, you personally, know, he, he might let it finish. Wow, he actually got it nicely done. He might let it finish and not use it, or he or he may. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could take it. Okay, see that's, that's okay. what I was talking about. So so he's gonna he's gonna let the thing finish. But he's making two stargates. Now, Here we go. And he, because he had to get a warp prism because he was going for DTs, he just takes an island. Now I wonder also maybe he was gonna do this all along. I don't know. And pressure know, with the DTs into air toss, perhaps. Maybe. As you guys can see, it's it's not a it's not a clean island that you can hit from any angle. It's actually kind of boxed in, which I think is a good touch, by the way, on this map. I haven't really been able to talk about this whenever I yeah. cast on this map, but I mean, it, it makes it a lot easier to take the island, right? It's easier to right. defend. You can set up cannons. You can uh, place buildings there, even if you don't want people to drop right there. Yeah, it, 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 it's pretty cool. Now. It, it, I believe, okay, he is going to make one DT. I was curious to see, is he going to make uh, any DTs at all and just try to poke around and keep Zerg on his toes? Now, because Protoss has the island, let's just, let's assume for a second, guys, because we're still early on in this. Let's just assume that Zerg can't retake it. Now, Zerg does know, so there's a higher chance Zerg will try to retake it. But let's say that Zerg uh, can't. This means that Protoss actually has a really accessible fourth base. Yeah, it's, the center left is, like, easy peasy to take. It's right there. He could even consider taking the other island because, you know, even though it's oh, very close, know. it's very close to the Zerg, but if the Zerg doesn't go for air, even if he does try to go Mutas, yeah. you know, you're going to have so many Phoenixes out, you're going double Stargate. There's no way that they're really going to be able to drop or get anything over there. Yeah, I mean, you do make a good point. I mean, if they're going to if they're going to try to fight the Phoenixes um, air to air, you can't do that with Mutas. You can't do that with anything that can hit the ground. So, I, I mean, I, initially I was kind of like pulling back from what you said, but I think you might be right. Um, but I don't know. You know, then again, it's SOS, right? I mean, he does so many weird strats. What, what is happening? That was not... Okay. Those Phoenixes were supposed to get that Overlord, I think. Yeah, the Phoenixes got caught in the recall, it looks like. Yeah. But he does recall a bunch of those probes over to the base, get them mining. I think Stats yesterday used the Warp Prism, but... Uh, SOS wants to be a bit more tricky. It's just the kind of guy he is. Oh, now, see, this is this is why SOS is so cool. Now, see that that one arc on there is not going away. All right, that is the bouncer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the bridge bouncer. Well, let me bouncer. tell you something. These, these Zerglings are going to try to come through, and he's going to be like, you can't wear sandals in the club. <laughs> <laughs> the, the links are going to no be No like, feelers on, in man, the Protoss space. Come on, dude. Yeah. Like hopping around, like, yeah. what's up, man? But let me tell you something. That Archon is a douchebag bouncer, and nobody's having fun tonight. 
Nobody gets through there, tell. okay? He's really Even Tasteless, too. who normally gets to cut the line because he's so cool. No. Um, that is... That's that. Now, look at this. He comes in here. He's going to shave off whatever he can. Gets out. SOS. You and your big, sexy brain. Look at this. Okay, now he pushes. He's got charge, but there are a lot of Hydras already out on the map, and 12 more and were just made. The, the beauty of this is with this aggression, the island is safe. Zerk actually can't attack that island as well. Uh... God, I just, I, I just love casting SOS's games, man. I mean, this is just so cool. Yeah. He's got to be careful not to go too far away from that war person, but here we go. Okay, he's coming in. I know he's going to try to get the Hydras here. The Lynx have almost been staved off, which means the Zealots are going to start going ham on the Lynx, uh, on the Hydras here. Oh, no, wait, no, no, there's not enough. I think Zergle exists, no problem. Oh, boy. Okay, so what SOS was doing was smart, but the more basic approach here by Biel is actually paying off. Now, Biel has a window for a timing uh, counterattack. Actually, maybe, no, he doesn't. Because there's nowhere he can really attack comfortably. Sorry, guys, this is like a weird game to yeah, cast because we got an island here, so I have to keep. Also, a, a newer map, too. It, it is yeah, a pretty long rush distance to get over there, even with the Look bridge. At that. Even with the pathing in StarCraft 2, the Phoenix is going to get stuck there. That's funny. Yeah. I, I think what SOS should have done is make another war prism, control the skies, don't let them get any vision, and drop the fourth base, try to kill that, go into the main drop there, support with the Phoenixes, you know, right. warping a bunch of right. adepts. That's the kind of, you know, I, I think that would have been a much better approach. Instead, he kind of, I don't know if he freaked out or if he was just like, oh, I'm, I, maybe he thought he was farther ahead than he actually was. And he was like, no, I can just kill him. But actually, he just lost everything. Well, it, it's, it's funny, too, because if you get the island and you're doing this style of play, like, I thought the Archon alone was pretty cool. I didn't think he was going to push, but then he did. And then I'm like, I got such a man crush on SOS's play style. I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to work. But it didn't. <laughs> But uh, this is a problem up here. Um, there is, like, not quite enough. Uh, the Immortal's handy, but there's still a good amount of Hydras here. Now, he, okay, that's what you want to do. Get the Cybernetic Spore. That gives you access in here. But uh, also, you can't make Stalkers and other range. just trying to help you. Tough call here for Biel. Um, looks like he might have you to know. back off. I don't see any reinforcements coming here. Now, there's something happening in the upper right. I can't see what it is, but there's something happening on the mini-map. Um, so oh, we'll, we'll find out what that is in a little bit here. Mass lift, and he's killing a lot of these Hydras now. Does he have enough, yeah, though? They does. all drop out. Just, wow. That's a tough call, right? He, he, at that point in time, he decides, I have to lift up with pretty much everything because my ground army is a little bit limited. And he's going to take out these Hydras. This is a really great player by SOS. Now, I wonder if he's going to try to uh, expand to the upper left. I think with the supply count here, Zerg is actually a little bit too tough to try to, 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 to move out on the map, but, but let, let, let's go ahead and wait and see. This is the other reason why the island works, is because your natural is so easily defended. Uh, we saw the same yeah, thing yeah. from stats, where he's just like, no, I can just make a wall and like four pylons and a couple of cannons, and they're, you're never, ever, ever getting up my ramp. SOS was yeah. so far behind in terms of army supply there. Now, obviously, a lot of it was roaches, but just the, the the cannons, the or rather the pylon cannons, the you know the overcharges, the uh, the the one immortal that was safe for the entire fight. Now, that's all he needed. Now hold up, this might be enough to break it. Zerg got to that point where they can suddenly like scale up the max like crazy fast, and this might just be too much. Now there's okay, now there's actually five or no, I'm sorry, four immortals down. Oh no, there's five total. Okay, there it is. It's coming up by the player screen. He has too many immortals at this point, you know. Uh, as long as he continues to build more pylons and make sure he's overcharging that, it's going to be very, very hard. Oh, this is a great play. It's assuming that you actually use those units. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was, was going to pick up the Hydras there. Okay, he's coming in now. One Immortal being uh, kited back. Phoenix Immortal, is it enough here? The lifts on the Hydras and more Zealots coming down. Very, very hard holds here for SOS. I, I'm not sure he's going to be able to. Yeah, he needs to keep picking up the Hydras. The, the Immortals can, they can kind of fight the Roaches. But uh, I, I think, you know, the promise Hydras just do so much damage. I mean, we got uh, SOS hanging on by a thread here. Literally uh, by a thread. Not it. enough. Yeah. Okay, so that strat that SOS was, did was cool, but he should not have attacked those Zealots and the Archon. SOS, that, but you see what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah, it's yeah. the idea, the, the, the overall idea is good, but he hasn't quite mapped out that portion. But Biel, uh sticking to his roots, just, you know, very basic Zerg defense. Uh, Protoss makes a mistake, and Zerg exploits it. Uh, eventually, he was able to just hammer his way through, and uh, this this match has been turned on his head, Valdez. Right now, CJ is one win away from taking down the Jin. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is insanity. I mean, Jin just played against KT yesterday. 
and won in an ace match. And now they're having trouble here against a kind of broken CJ team. And now the last map is Trap versus Bunny, and Trap has a downwards arrow for a reason. He is not doing all that well nowadays. And on Frost, I mean, I don't know. Bunny definitely has a very good chance here, especially with this momentum, to take this one and give CJ the win. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a funny situation here, right? I did not expect for the game to rest on Trap's shoulders. I thought Trap was just going to be like, okay, Trap, maybe you can take this. Good luck. The rest of the players should have this. This is probably the best matchup to put you in Trap. But like a player like SOS is supposed to win. I frankly, I think he was supposed to win that game. He did that, that attack, which was a little bit foolish. Yeah. But, um, let's let's see what happens. Uh, Bunny is a, a, a great player. I, I think um, I think he definitely can can uh, take down Trap. I, but if I had to pick uh, somebody to win, I, I would go with Trap. Yeah. Uh, I voted for Trap. I'm not sure what you voted for, Tasteless, but... Uh, I voted for everybody on Jinner. I thought it was yeah, going to be a 3 actually, No, actually. yeah, me, me and you actually did the same thing, where That's we right, just yeah. wrote in the chat, we're like, SKT, Jinner. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought it was going to yeah. be two 3-0s, but uh, not the case so far. So we're going to have to see what exactly Trap's going to have in store for us. Now, uh, earlier in the year, I forget which interview it was exactly, but Trap was saying that um, he still feel like he, he feels like he hasn't developed as... as, as the top player that he could be just yet. Yeah. He's a lot of times a little bit too conservative. We've definitely had games where Trap gets ahead and uh, doesn't attack, which is not necessarily wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, I have mean had, we saw SOS was ahead there and he attacked and yeah, no, <laughs> lost his well, whole there, army. Yeah, th there you go. Um, you know, in, in, in the the words that Artosis has used, which I think are probably probably the best phrase that he's ever said to, that's, that can, yeah. you can generalize is when you're ahead, what are you supposed to do? You just keep getting more ahead. A lot of times, if you're in the lead in a game, that's the other guy's problem. Yeah. Okay. One mistake, he needs to do something. He yeah. needs to like attack or harass or somehow get himself right, ahead. Right. Right. And, and, and if you follow that a general rule for StarCraft II, what you'll see is that because you're ahead, all you have to do is, is keep up with upgrades, keep making stuff. Because a lot of players will, will get a lead, and then they, they just attack. And I've seen even, like, Grandmaster players yeah. who are really good just attack. And it's like three base versus three base, and there's no rhyme or reason to it.